Hey guys, Jacob over here, uh, coming to you with my instant reactions from Game 7 between the Milwaukee Bos and the Boston Celtics, as well as a uh, reflection as a, on the season as a whole. Uh, so we'll start with Game 7. Uh, I, it's, it's an understatement to say I'm disappointed. Uh, they lost by 16, 112, and a 96. And, I mean, like, is I guess we all kind of knew it. We all knew that they would do this. They're the Milwaukee Bucks, Bucks for Christ's sakes. Like, they they weren't gonna win a game seven on the road in Boston. Give me a break. I mean, I I will fully admit I went on I was on Twitter and I personally guaranteed a game seven victory, but I think I got a little too caught up in the hype, and I I think I knew deep down that they were gonna lose the game. I and really I mean from the start they they didn't play as a team. They didn't. They didn't move the ball well on offense. It felt like they were, the Bucks were playing, everyone was just playing for themselves, and especially Bledsoe. Like, Eric Bledsoe had a good game, yeah. Eric Bledsoe had a fantastic game, but it felt like he was just playing so the haters would shut up, you know, like, for, so the crowd would stop chanting his name. So it, he, it felt like he was just playing for himself. Like, he, you got to be able to tune that out, and really the Bucks as a whole in the in the uh, four road games they played against the Celtics, you could tell that there's just a, a stark difference between the games they played at home and away. At home, they were super motivated every single game to come out and just play hard. At, or on the road, it, it was a grind. It was just a grind. It was an uphill battle every game, and you could see that they had a lack of focus in pretty much every uh, road game, it culminating in this one, and there was just no especially defensively, like, they were just all over the place. And the Boston Celtics exploited that. They played amazing basketball. They moved the ball really well. They were, they thoroughly outcoached the Bucks. Brad Stevens is miles ahead of Joel Prunty. Um, and that's what it boiled down to in, in the end. Like, the Bucks had to steal a game on the road, and Joel Prunty wasn't able to manufacture that. Uh, we had some chances in games 1 and 5. We weren't able to win either of those. Um, and at the end of the day, home court advantage ruled. I think if the Bucks were at home in this game seven, I think they would have won. Uh, but since they were on the road, uh, I mean, going into the game, like I had a pretty un unnerving feel. I, I, I felt like it, it was just like, we, I was just waiting for this to happen, you know, just waiting for them to like just fall apart. And they did. And I, I can't say I'm really surprised about it. Uh, they're the Bucks. They've always let us down. But there is reason for optimism. As disappointing as this year was, it was a very disappointing year, by the way. I remember there were predictions of a 51 season by me and of many other people. There are people saying maybe we'd even go to the conference finals. Uh, and it, it all just came crashing down after the whole Jason Kidd debacle. And after Prunty got back in... Um, after Prunty got in as the interim coach, we won, we had that stretch where we were playing really good basketball, and then it fell apart, and it fell apart, and I remember it was the game against the Pelicans, we blew, like, what, a, a 25 or 26 point lead or something like that, and that, and we lost, like, in overtime, like, at the last second, Jason Terry's buzzer beater, he made the three, but it was, like, too late, and ever since then, the Bucks were just up and down and up and down, and you, you just... You just looked at them and you said, how in the world is this team ever going to win a playoff series? They were just so inconsistent all season long. And, I mean, that inconsistently, that inconsistency was, all, was, was exactly what happened in this playoff series. Like, they lost the first game. It was a close game the first game. We had the Middleton buzzer beater, lost in overtime. But we thought, hey, we could hang with this team. Second game, we got blown out. We were like, oh, God, here we go. And then third game, we blew them out. And we're like, oh, wow. That was pretty cool. Then the fourth game, we had that big lead. We blew it. Then we won at the last second. We are like, oh, wow, we're, we tied the series. And then we had game five where we almost came back and win. Then the refs uh, gave us that uh, bullshit call with the Al Horford uh, shot clock violation. And then we are like, oh, God, uh, now we got to win the last two. And then we had game six, and we won game six. The Bucks finally won a game six. Oh, my God, we, we sent it to seven. We might actually do this. And then we had game seven, and now it all just came crashing down. And that was literally exactly what happened this season to the Bucks. That was the entire culmination of, this, of the series. It was the entire season in a microcosm, that playoff series. That was the Bucks. That was, 
that was the most Bucks playoff series I have ever seen, to be honest. I mean, it was filled with these up and down moments, and I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, I think the Bucks win in, win in, win the game seven if it's at home, but. And on the road, they were unfocused and at times unmotivated, and they played sloppy basketball on both ends, and it led to a loss. And like I said, the 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 coaching gap is just it's too great. It was too great for the Bucks to overcome. But as I was saying though, this off season it's pivotal for the Bucks, and if they make the right moves, if they can hire the right coach, find a find a center. I don't know who it's going to be. Thon Maker played pretty well in this series, and I think he established himself a role on this team going forward, but. Uh, they've got to find a guy who can play center and, and just be like a dominating presence. They need a good center. Whether they get that through the draft, whether they get that through a trade or free agency, I don't know, but they've got to find one because I feel like the Bucks, if they had a good center, they would have won this series too. But um, really, uh, it was a disappointing year, but there is hope on the horizon, and if the Bucks make the right moves this offseason, they will set themselves up to be contenders in the Eastern Conference for the foreseeable future. And and it's all about keeping Giannis happy, too. Like is, He's got two more years left on his contract. He's got this year and next year, this coming year and next year. So uh, got to keep him happy, got to make the right moves. Um, obviously, we all would have loved to win this series, but at the end of the day, we were going to we were gonna lose to the Sixers. Um, I know that... It, I mean, we should have beaten the Celtics. We should have. We had a talent advantage over them. I think we were the better team. But like the like I said, the coaching gap. Um, uh, next season, guys. I know I said it last season. I know I said next season last season. Next season for real this time. Next season for real. We will be good. It's going to be tough. The Eastern Conference is pretty good next year. But next year, be ready. Because the bucks are coming.